Today's tutorial on Amazon Security Lake is going to be pretty technical. I'll go into problem statement of first, why did we decided to introduce something called the Open Cybersecurity Schema Framework? And then after that, we'll talk about what problems are we trying to solve with Amazon Security Lake? And then towards the end, I will show you what can we do using a wonderful query system called Athena, and at the same time, we can also use open search that can give us the beautiful visualization of everything that's going on within your AWS environment. I mean, who else is it going to be better to learn from than for Mr. Hacker Loy, who has AWS Golden Jacket, meaning that I have all AWS certification. The first thing I want to talk about is a hacker. For example, your best friend forever, Mr. Hacker Loy who is not a particularly good person. So he is going to, of course, be targeting you or your organization. And he'll be going after, for example, he'll be using MMAP to scan your devices. He will be doing SQL injection. He'll be doing cross-site scripting and so on and so forth against your target devices or against your target service, workloads, compute, whatever. And of course, as a result of that, what you need to do as a security person is you need to think about, okay, how can I do security monitoring across my workloads? And what has happened is the result of the creation of something called a security monitoring system. And the security monitoring system works on telemetries of data, works on logs. So if you see on the right side, we have several log examples. So you have one, two, three, and they all come in different formats. And if you see here on the left side, we have, for example, your laptop. So your laptop may have something like antivirus and they send the antivirus logs over into the security monitoring system. And you have your servers and your servers can come in many different flavors, variants. They can be, for example, Linux servers, they can be Windows servers. And of course, what you do then is these logs are also sent over into the security monitoring system. Likewise, there are software or applications on top of these operating systems, like your Apache, Nginx, and I mean, the list goes on. So many different type of databases too, and your databases could be Windows SQL Server, Postgres SQL Server, the list goes on. Likewise, finally on network devices, same thing. Many different providers, many different vendors, and many different log formats. And we see on the right over here, we have different types of formats. So you have, for example, some maybe starting with time, followed by payload and followed by data. Some could be starting with payload first, followed by time, followed by data. And finally, some of them could be having just payload and then no other data. Okay, so these are examples of it and there are many, many other examples of it. And as these logs are sent over into the security monitoring system over here, so that you can get alerts, you can know that, hey, there is a bad guy trying to attack you guys. They have to do a lot of heavy lifting in terms of something we call as ETL, which is extract, transform, and load. So they need to extract these logs, transform them, make them into something that security monitoring can then use to do correlation on or do machine learning on to detect, hey, there is a tag, there is a suspicious IP address, there is an anomaly in the traffic, and they want to do those and apply those trend intelligence against them. So we first begin with data sources. So first you have your root 53 resolver. So this is when an internal workload, the compute, what it does is it tries to do a DNS query. And what happens then, we can also make that as one of the data sources that can be made available to Security Lake. We have AWS Web Application Firewall, one of my favorite services. And what you can do here is, it's typically used for protecting internet-facing applications. And if there's a DDoS, distributed denial service attack, there's someone trying to do SQL injection, cross-site scripting, which, whichever the case is, you can likewise make it available through Security Lake you have AWS Security Hub. So this is a cloud security posture management service. It's able to look for a misconfiguration. Say for example, if someone opens up Secure Shell port 22 or port 2389, remote desktop protocol, we can look up for those misconfiguration. Same thing is able to be made available in Security Lake SA data source. And you have CloudTrail. CloudTrail is the who does what. It's logging everything that everyone is doing within the AWS account. So same thing, you're able to make them available in the format through Security Lake. Your EKS, which is Elastic Community Service, all the logs can also be made available. Your AWS VPC flow logs 
can also be made available. So these are the network activities happening within your virtual private cloud. And finally, you have all these different custom sources that it can also be made available through Amazon Security Lake. And when that happens, they are provided or installed inside S3 buckets in a standardized format. And with that, we'll be able to use query services or visualization services like OpenSearch or Retina to help us direct over into the data and help us look up for bad actor activities, anomalies, and things that you want to do perhaps in terms of threat detection, in terms of threat investigation, in terms of instant response, all of those can be built on top as the additional layer now that you have the foundation and data sources piece that has been developed and implemented. So you can see right here, I have login into the AWS account. And in this case, we have the security lake service. And you can see right here, there are three instructions for you. The first one is now that it's been set up and you can easily just click enable on it and it will start rolling. So you can start querying Security Lake, which has all of its data stored in the S3 buckets that I was showing you earlier in the architecture. You can integrate with partners over here, so you can centralize your security locks in Amazon Security Lakes. And again, all of this will be in OCSF format, so that's perfect, it's beautiful. And finally, towards the right, you can visualize data, which I'll be showing you towards the end of this session, where we can get the beautiful graphs, beautiful pie charts, histograms, and all of that, the ones that you love. So the first thing you can do is go on to the left. These are sources. So these are the sources that you have decided to enable. So you can see right here, we have Cloud Trail, we have EKS, Route 53, Security Hub, and so on and so forth. So you have enabled them. And you can enable them depending on the security use cases you have, the type of possible analytics or investigations that you want to do, that you want to be able to ingest and then build insights based on those ingested data sources. Likewise, you can also have subscribers. Subscribers are people who will be given the permission to access over into your S3 buckets, especially for external AWS accounts. So maybe you have now here a logging account. At the same time, you have a security account. A security account need access to the data sources. They need access to Security Lake, and you want to be able to provide them the access in a controlled manner. In this case, we have data access method of lake formation, or in other cases, it can also be S3. So when you create a subscriber over here, you can see that we have the data access methods. So we have two options. S3 as well as lake formation. Next up, you have the regions. Sorry, so these are the regions that are made available for you. You are also able to add regions. So if there are certain regions you're operating out of, in my case, I operate primarily out of Singapore, which is AP Southeast One, and also US East One. So I've enabled for these two regions. But if you want to, at any point in time, just click on to add regions, and you have the option here to specify the sources to ingest. You can scroll all the way down, okay? And you'll be able to see, okay, what are the additional regions that you want to be able to start ingestion? So this is the thing that you can easily set up with Security Lake. Next up, you have custom sources. So this is the place where I was sharing with you earlier, those that are typically native with AWS services, you can have them enabled easily. And at the same time, perhaps you have other sources that you want to ingest. All right, so in that case, you create a custom source. So I was sharing with you about Linux operating system logs, Windows service logs, databases logs, and so on. So if you want to ingest them, make them available directly from Security Lake, this is the place to go to. Next up, if there are any specific issues or notifications, you can see them right here as well. And finally, you have accounts. So this are the accounts that I've enabled Security Lake on. So depending on which accounts that you have that you want to be doing the monitoring, doing the logging for, you can easily go right there, okay? And if you see on the bottom left side, we have general. So you can click on to the general setting for Security Lake and the roll-up regions. And roll-up regions is very important because what it does here is that you have the aggregator region. In this case, I'm aggregating into US East One, which is not Virginia. And then we have the contributing region for Singapore. So with that in mind, it means that when I'm setting up my queries, I'm setting up my dashboards, I can just directly query into US East One and I'll also be able to get data for AP Southeast One. Last but not least, we got usage. So right here, this is the projected cost for all accounts. So I have very small workloads running in AWS, which can then let us see the usage that we have on Amazon Security Lake. Now what I'm gonna do for you is to head over to Amazon Athena for us to query into Amazon Security Lake and see what's going on. So right here, I have examples. So let's go ahead and take a look at the ones on the left. 
So you have data storage, a catalog, and a database. So the database is the one that we have right here, Amazon Security Lake Glue Database US East One. So I've selected onto it, and you can see the tables. So the tables are the one that's holding all of the sources. So if I want to take a look, a quick look at CloudTrail, I can just select onto it and click Preview Table. And you can see right here, it's running. It's running a query, and we'll be able to see the information. So we have them in rows and columns. So you have the metadata, you have the time, you have the cloud, you have the API, and so on and so forth. So lots of interesting information that you can see right here immediately, okay? So of course, if I scroll up, you can see that we're using something that is SQL-like. So this is where you're comfortable with using structured query language-like kind of instructions, or right? you can use select all from all right, for in this case, we have the database followed by the specific table and then we're limiting to 10, 10 roles, 10 responses. Okay, so this is a great way for you to get started. And you would have also seen earlier, I had a couple of queries. So one of them was this one where we added a where clause. So the where clause specified that, hey, Mr. Hackaloy, maybe your best friend forever told you that, look, there is this IP address, a naughty IP address, and we can enter a where clause here insert it into this SQL query like, and then we can run it. Okay, so again, I've run this again. I ran it earlier, and when I run it, you can see right here, this is the IP address and its interaction with our web application firewall. So very quickly, we'll be able to see, okay, perhaps which request went through and was not blocked by specific managed rules and so on. So this is a pretty good way for you to start doing your threat investigation, your threat hunting. Perhaps you have other telemetries beyond IP addresses. Likewise, you can use them to, depending on the columns that you want to interrogate on, depending on the rules you want to look at, the timestamps, the timeline, you can easily use this to do your investigation. So this is the part where it gets exciting. And this was the one I was sharing with you earlier called the zero ETL, extract transform load. So if you see on the left side, I'm on open search service right now, I can click on to connect the data sources. And this is the part, I have already created one, I'll show you the steps of how that looks like. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and select on to connect new data source. And there's an option here called security lake. So I'll select on the security lake, directly query the data in security lake with open search, create visualizations and on demand indices for specific data sets in security lake for faster analysis. Click next onto that. And there are three steps. So of course, making sure that you have security lake enabled, you have set up the permissions, and you have set up query access. And the last part is pretty important because the whole idea is if you're gonna access the logging account, which holds your security lake, let's say you have your audit account, your security account, and you need to query into it, you need to set it up through security lake, which I was sharing with you earlier as a subscriber. So let me scroll down further. We have the data connection name, so we can call this, say, for example, Security Lake. Now we create a role, right, for the open search. Okay, so this is IAM permission access is required, so we can identify your role when accessing Security Lake. Okay, so you can create a new role, or you can use an existing role they've created, and there is a sample custom policy that you can click onto, and we show you, for example, you have the AOSS API access all, dashboards access all to the specific resource, all right, you have the glue, all right, get databases, and so on and so forth, and then against the specific resources, and then you have the lake formation, get data access, and finally, you have the trust relationship over here. All right, so this is the principal direct query dot open search service dot Amazon AWS dot com and then to assume role. Okay, then as you scroll down further, or right, you select onto the glue database, or right, once you select onto it, click next, you will create this connection. Now, the real beauty is when it comes to open search dashboards. So you can see right here when I scroll down further, there is this section called open search dashboards, and we have the following here. This is called trail. So you can create a dashboard. So in our case, it can be, say, web application firewall locks, VPC flow locks. So let's say I select into WAF, or I go ahead and select onto the glue database. And I change this refresh interval to say five minutes, select existing workspace and so on. So I can go ahead and create a dashboard. So you can see right here, we will get the green color bar that says successfully created dashboard WAF. So once I scroll down, I can show you here. I'll click onto Cloud Frail, and we'll see a wonderful dashboard that is made available through OpenSearch dashboards. This is where the very nice kind of widgets and data that you're looking for is right here. 
So you can see right here, I have the following. You can also start filtering by clicking. So for example, with events over time, I can click onto the event count here. So we're zooming in right, and we can see, for example, the start time, all right, and the kind of events that's occurring. I can scroll down further. We can see the account IDs, the categories, the regions. Scroll down further, we can see the top 10. Top 10 event, top 10 services, top 10 source IPs. So great way for you to know what's going on at a glance across your AWS environment. And same thing here, I've switched over to Web Application Firewall, you can see over here on the top left. And of course we can go ahead and take a look, say for example, over the past one week, I'll do an update on this, and we can see some changes. So we can see the changes, for example, we have the following of two deny, one allow, all right, we can see the different types of request history. I can scroll down further. We have the sources, we have the request, the web ACL name, we have a map that could show you. So if I have more traffic, I can show you more things over here. Okay, now we can scroll down further. These are the top 10 client IPs and top 10 terminating rules. All right, so fantastic way for you to start drilling down further. And I highly encourage you to go ahead and try it out and let me know how it goes.